author of SB 13, Senator Joseph Silk. All right, I actually have notes. My wife gets on to me when I, when I don't have notes. Uh, can everybody hear me all right? Very good. So since we've started this, which was about 30 minutes ago, nationwide on average we've seen about, oh, 60 innocent children been murdered in the United States. Just since you've been sitting here. 60. So hopefully, I know everybody in this room has probably already woken up, but hopefully that will wake you up even more. Um, so again, I am Senator Joseph Silk from far southeastern Oklahoma. I'm up here with my family. My wife Kimberly's out in the lobby with, a, I think, two of our children. We've got seven. They're all right up there with their grandma there. So uh, we're happy to be here. Uh, my story, real briefly, and I'll try to be, move through this pretty quick. I was a typical pro-lifer when I was elected to the Senate in 2014. The first pro-life bill that I ran, it was actually recommended to me by Tony Larringer. And uh, then just so happens that I bump into these crazy abolitionists. And my story is, I wish it was like that for everybody because I ran into them. I think John Mishner called me and, and he, he said, hey, I got some guys I want you to meet. And so we, we met. And it was in about a 10-minute conversation in my office at the Capitol. It was like a light bulb clicked. And I was like, oh, that's exactly right. This pro-life legislation is absolutely useless. Absolutely useless. And so we did a committee sub. That was a Senate Bill 1118, which there was a big fight over it. Uh, but that's, that's really, I know it's a really brief story, and I wish it was like that for everybody, but it really honestly was just a complete paradigm shift in about a 10-minute conversation. And since then, every year since then, I've carried abolition legislation, and it continues to pick up momentum uh, leading up to Senate Bill 13. So I want to cover basically three topics as briefly as I can in this speech, and they're going to be the stark difference between pro-life and abolition, which you've already heard some, some of, but I'm just going to touch on that just, just a little bit. Uh, the parallels, which this is interesting just as you go out into public and start to, to start to talk to people, the parallels between the abolition of abortion movement that we are a part of today and the abolition of slavery movement, because they're almost identical when it comes to engaging the, the public. And then also, and this is kind of the most important one that I hope you'll actually take notes on, is how we have to change our way of thinking about how we actually address this, this abortion issue. And I'm not, I'm not talking about pro-lifers. I'm talking about even us that understand the pro-life movement is a joke, the abolitionists, even, even myself. I have to catch myself every once in a while when I'm talking about that. So, but to start it all off, we're all here for Senate Bill 13. And this is going to sound crazy, but Senate Bill 13 is very simple. It basically just says that Oklahoma is not going to perform abortions anymore. It is now criminalized. It's homicide. It's basically if a mother were to go kill their one-year-old child, abortion is the same thing. Because it's providing that no matter what stage of development that child's in, they're offered the exact same protections as any other human being. So it's that simple. It literally criminalizes abortion. So that's what Senate Bill 13 is. Talk to me afterwards to get more details. But that's as simple as it is. Uh, so the pro-life, the pro-life thing. It, it, Russell did a good job that most pro-life legislators and pro-life organizations, a lot of us who have probably did, donated money to, really aren't interested in ending abortion. They really aren't. When you sit down and talk to them and say, so is our main goal to actually end abortion, you're probably not going to get a real straight answer. And so you, you really need to remember that. Um, some legislators, and this is where it talks about you know, a little bit how we need to change a little bit, some legislators are open to abolition of abortion. They're open to it, um, but they, for some reason, they can't kind of pull away from the other pro-life ideas. Uh, and there's big organizations. I mean, American Family Radio. Uh, there's personhood bills. There's down, you know, can't kill your baby has Down syndrome bills. The, these things sound good, but they're not. They put us behind, which is why we are where we're at. So. The only way that we can approach this, and this is the really stark difference between abolition and abortion, the only bill that we need to even entertain is a complete and total abolition of abortion. Nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. There, there.
So they're, they're, we've got to just completely turn away. If you hear of, of another state running a personhood bill or something like that, immediately question it. Because if they just pass a personhood bill and abortion's still not illegal, guess what's going to happen? They're still killing babies. And so we've got to criminalize it. That's, that's the only way we can do it. So the parallels, moving on to the parallels between today's abolition uh, of abortion movement and then the abolition of slavery, I just wanted to, to paint a picture for you guys because you guys are going to deal with it and I'm dealing with it and, and you need to, and there's some interesting stories, you know, a story that I have here in a minute about it. We are going to be painted as radicals and we're going to be painted as, you know, the far right or whatever it is. You're going to hear that abolition, if Oklahoma were, were to become the first abolition state, it would crush our economy and it's bad for the economy. You're, you're going to hear that. I've already heard it. Um, or it goes against the Supreme Court, and we can't challenge federal law. Every one of those things, the people who led the charge to abolish slavery, they dealt with the exact same thing. It would be bad for the economy if we abolished slavery. Uh, the Supreme Court said slavery is legal, so we can't really do, do anything about it. So keep that in mind as you're engaging your friends about this. So bring up abolition of abortion at your Sunday school next Sunday. And just see what just see what happens, because I have, and a lot of people that you think you knew, you really didn't didn't know very well, and that happened with again that happened with the people who abo who led the charge in abolishing slavery, exact same thing. Better yet, ask your pastor to teach a sermon on abolishing human abortion, and see how that conversation goes, and again. But again, I, ch I challenge you to do that. Same thing with the people who abolished slavery. It was kind of, it took a long time for the churches to actually accept it and start and start running with it. Uh, and, and still, go talk to your legislator about it. So a good story, uh, we're looking for, you know, there, there's gaining momentum and support for SB 13 in the, in the Senate and in the House. So in the, in the early phases of it, we're looking for a House author. Um, and, and a guy came up, he was a freshman legislator, and a, a guy that I know from another part of the state, and I'll leave names out of it, just because I'm going to attempt to be nice. Um, he called and said, I think this guy will carry the bill. Will you call him? And I said, okay. So I called this representative, very brief conversation, in about 10 seconds I knew exactly which way it was going to go, which wasn't surprising. And, uh, and he said, you know, he said, this whole abolition deal, I just don't want it to you know, possibly tarnish your reputation. And I said, well, and all I said, and it ended pretty quick, because I said, you know, when, when we abolished slavery a long time ago, there was a lot of legislators who were worried about their reputation then as well, just like you. And then we kind of got off the phone. So it, it didn't go over very well, but you're going you're gonna to hear with that. And he also said he didn't want to be marginalized. Didn't want to be marginalized. And I'm like, well, marginalize me, please, for running an abolition bill. But that's, that's their mentality, and it's very similar to when they abolished slavery. So moving on to probably the most important topic I want to talk about is changing our way of thinking. So even us, we've kind of accepted that Roe v. Wade was a legitimate Supreme Court ruling, um, and so we're attempting, which it wasn't. It should have been ignored from the get-go, and the state should have said, thanks for drafting that, I read it, but we're not going to do that. Period. That's what should have happened. But unfortunately, what we did is we sort of accepted it. Sort of accepted it as a legitimate thing. And so we've been attempting to fight it as any other law that we don't like. Whether it be education policy or tax policy or something like that. You, you can't do that because the legalization of slaughtering innocent children should never, ever, ever be tolerated, and it doesn't matter who said it. It should never be tolerated, and so it should never have been even gotten this far. But we, but we continue to, and even, even me, when I'm talking to legislators, we automatically kind of default to this whole, how do we, how do we legally, how, do we, how are we going to legally overturn Roe v. Wade? Or how are we going to, um, you know, is it a Tenth Amendment thing? Is it really a states' rights issue? Uh, was, I just read an article about how Roe v. Wade wasn't really constitutional, the, some of the stuff they read about the 14th Amendment, and it just goes on and on and on, but none of that even matters, 
because the entire thing should just totally be ignored by the states. It doesn't matter. You, you don't fight something as atrocious as the as nine guys saying, yep, go kill all the babies you want. You don't fight that legally. We don't go to court and try to hash out if it's okay or not to go kill babies. You just don't. And that's what the state is supposed to do. So, and it, but again, even me, I find myself going back to the, le well, what are we going to do legally? What kind of stuff are we going to run? What kind of things could we pick at with, with what happened with Roe and all that stuff? Get away from that. The whole, thing is, the whole thing's ludicrous. It's a joke. We don't need to go to court to fight of it. It's just, it's just a, it's a complete, utter joke, and we need to completely ignore it. So keep that in mind when you think about uh, changing your way of thinking. And again, one of the one of the best people I've ever served with in the Senate. Uh, we had a, we're having a meeting about I think it was Senate Bill, I think eleven eighteen in his office. I mean, stout Christian guy supported the bill, but he was still voting for stupid pro life stuff that didn't do anything. So I was talking to him and I was like, man, what would you do if the Supreme Court said, hey, you know what, you can kill your babies up to like one year old if it doesn't work out, which is the exact same thing medically, exact same thing. And he was like, well, I guess I'd get my musket and go to war. I mean, and he was kind of being joked, but he, but he was getting the point. But that's the thing. Why is it that even uh, those of us who understand abolition, there's still this nagging. We really need to be changed, completely change our way of thinking about this. So we, for some reason, we've just fallen into this this idea that it's okay and it can be challenged like any other law, which which it absolutely doesn't. I love when people quote the founders. They're complete hypocrites because if we would take the founders approach to something like this, I just want to read a very brief statement from the Declaration of Independence and it lists some of the basically life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and it says that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government laying its foundations on such principles. That's what the founders said about stuff like this. But, oh, no, no, we can't do that. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and again, we go back to all these things that Russell just talked about. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who I hope everybody knows here, said, we are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are to drive a spoke in the wheel itself. Initially, just stop the whole stupid thing. Stop it and ignore it. That's the job of the state. So that's what we need from Oklahoma. We need Oklahoma to just stand up and say, nope, we're not going to do it anymore, and we're not going to go to court and fight it out. We're not killing innocent children anymore. And again, if it's this atrocious and it's this immoral, that's what we've got to do. That's the only thing we can do. So those are the three points that I want you to take away. I want you to take away the, the huge difference between pro-life and abolition Keep in mind the parallels that you're going to be dealing with of what we're dealing with now and the people who abolished slavery did then because they're, they're huge. So what do you do about it? And that's kind of the big question. We're, we're all on the same page in this room, prob most of us. Uh, so, so what do you do about it? So you really have three options, and they're pretty simple. You can do nothing. Just go home, turn on the radio, go back to work on Monday, and, yeah, it was an interesting talk that you heard. Just do nothing. That's one option. Keep doing things the same way. You can keep, uh, you know, tithing to your Southern Baptist Church, which I go to. And I don't tithe to them because they're giving money to. Well, that's a long story. But again, they're they're giving money to pro-life organizations who are actually lobbying against abolition legislation. So you keep doing stuff the same way and not getting anywhere, or you can completely engage and hammer down on your legislators within the next month. And it, when I'm t don't just shoot them an email. Call them and set up a meeting with them and say, okay, you're pro-life because probably most everybody's legislators here, the people who represent them, are pro-life. So go to their office and say, Senate Bill 13 is going to completely abolish abortion. What are you going to do about it? And pull all stops. Absolutely pin them to the wall with question after question after question after question. So you can do that, which that's what I would recommend. And also actively engage the public. If we have this same rally next year, let's make like five times the amount of people be here. But again, 
So actively engage them. Your circle of influence, whether it be at work or church or wherever it is, start talking about it. The, the, probably one of the main things that, that I've dealt with is possibly a little guilt for was I or am I vocal enough about this issue? And even though I'm at the Capitol, even though I'm running these bills, I have to say, no, I'm not. You know, I could have said more. I could have talked to more people. I could have been more blunt. I could have been more just, you know, just push the issue. Bring it to light. We can't ignore it anymore. So in Oklahoma right now, very straightforward plan. Probably one of the only states in the union currently that actually has a plan, a bill, a movement to move forward to absolutely abolish abortion. So get involved with Daniel, Russell, John. All of these guys say, what can I do to help? And then I'm going to leave you with three challenges. Just, actually, four. I'm sorry. Four challenges. So bring up this topic at church tomorrow. Bring it up. Whether it be Sunday or sc Sunday school. Wait, I'm, I'm actually going to speak at a church tomorrow in my district. So bring it up at Sunday school, whether it be you know during the greeting time, whatever. Bring it up with your pastor. Take your pastor out to lunch after church and just bring it up. Say, so what do you think about totally abolishing abortion, no excuses, ending this period? So bring that up. Number two, have three to five friends over to your house this week specifically to talk about the abolition of abortion. Because, see, we can have them over to talk to watch the Thunder game or play Xbox or whatever it is, but have them over specifically to talk about, say, you know, our nation, our state's got a big issue. And in Oklahoma right now, we have a big opportunity. So have them over to talk about that. Just three to five. Just three to five. Uh, and then come to the rally in February, which we'll hear more about. Come to the rally in February and bring at least one person with you. Because, again, this has got to grow and grow and grow. Last thing, start praying about it. Put it on your prayer list. Pray about it every single day. Because so many people that I talk to, uh, even in church and everywhere else, they, they say, we can't do this. You're never going to abolish abortion. This is just ridiculous. Same stuff they said about slavery, by the way. But I know the God that we serve. And it absolutely is possible. So, in closing, it really comes down to... Uh, We've got, a, we've got an opportunity here, this generation, to actually start something great, to actually end something horrible, to actually make abortion in Oklahoma just a dark spot in our history. Where that when our kids... So maybe our kids can look back on, on the days of abortion the way we look back on the days of slavery. Are we going to start that or are we going to not? And it really comes down to that. And I'll leave you with a quote, quote Edmund Burke, um, an Irish statesman in the 1700s, which we I'm sure are all familiar with. The only thing evil needs to triumph is for good men to do nothing. So thank you guys.